Hello. Hello, we are back. We're back. We, we're not wearing the same clothes as we were last time. This is no, throwing no, people no. off. Yeah, yeah. Throw them off. But this it? is the next batch of, uh, of clothes that yeah. you're just going to see for weeks, if not months. Yeah. Depends, <laughs> yeah, what we get, that, yeah. depends what we get to uh, get done today. What, what, what is it that, what, what do we say? What do you say, mate? I didn't say anything. Uh, I hope loads of people are watching. You're not. We can see the views. We're not, we're yeah, not watching, watching it. Demoralising, really. but yeah. it's okay. Um, just keep and, going. You know, if you are watching... Tell everyone about it. So Please do tell everyone. Yeah. So yeah, we are desperate. Yeah. Very desperate. Um, we're down a mic from Vice of Matter. That's who we are. Um, you can follow us on Instagram below. You probably found us on Instagram though, so kind of defeats the object of that. But whatever, yeah. you may not. You may have just you stumbled might across it in YouTube. You may have just stumbled across this video, and you'd be like, "Who are these guys? Who are these good-looking chaps?" Well, they're, uh, they're getting over two hundred views now, so uh, it's, it's a pretty big deal. We're just waiting for that uh, that sponsorship deal yeah, from yeah. Huel. Something yeah. like that. Or yeah. Apple. Apple? We've got a laptop. I'll we'll take it. Any, any, anything. Yeah. Um, anyway, today, what are we going to talk about today, Michael? Uh, Arsenal. Oh, that was it, yeah. So. Yeah, give a dog a bone. Give a dog a bone. Say what so you um, We're going to talk about content. We're going to talk about Instagram and, and all this sort of stuff. And, and we work with a lot of coaches who find Instagram, uh, I suppose, difficult to a certain degree. But I think part of that comes from A, not really knowing what to post, but also B, definitely not posting enough. Um, I'd say one of the most consistent things across the board and most coaches, they do not post enough on their stories. Yeah, mile, miles off, like way off the pace. Like ridiculously so. And I think some of that comes from not knowing what to post. And sometimes they just feel like they don't want to talk about nutrition and fitness and all this sort of stuff. So today we're going to do a little rundown of like how we use Instagram stories or how previously we did when we were doing more fat loss, muscle gain and, and working with clients more from that point of view. I think as we've got busier, it has stopped a little bit. We probably both need to get better at ourselves. Again, hands up. We're not going to say we're perfect to anything. We're not. But there's a reason that you need to do things a certain way on uh, on Instagram stories rather than the grid post and stuff like that. Yeah, it's um, it's one of the things that's I think the just just a way off, and it, and often even when people are consistent, it's probably not the right things as often mm-hmm. that sounds. Yeah, is that I, I genuinely think that coaches don't know why they're using Instagram. I think they're just using Instagram because every other coach uses Instagram, and mm-hmm. then. They look at what other coaches are doing and then just do that. Yeah. Um, and that's not what, what should be happening at all. So, think, and, be, and because of that, because they don't know why they're using Instagram, they're then not creative. Yeah. So they can't think of things themselves, yet they just do like a regurgitated thing that they've seen someone else do. Yeah. Like Alex or Mosey style reels. Yeah. Cool. I think... One of the biggest problems that I come up with with coaches and they need to get their heads out of their asses with it is that they go, I don't really like social media. Okay, that's great. You don't really like it. I don't really like doing admin, but I have to fucking do it. Yeah. I don't really like tracking finances. We have to do it. If you are an online coach or you want to be an online coach, you need to get rid of that mindset because it will, A, it will come across straight away. People know, people will be able to sense it straight away. And B, it's your livelihood. You're going yeah. to use social media to drum up clients. If you want to be an online coach, social media is going to be a huge part of your life. So if you don't like it, pick a different job. Yeah, That would be number one. Just be a normal PT in the gym and just rely on word of mouth. But it, that winds me up. When people are like, oh, I, don't, I just don't like social media. No one does. Yeah, yeah. I don't know anyone who really loves it. We, wouldn't, we probably wouldn't have it, or we might have it, but it w- certainly wouldn't be posting or whatever if, no. we weren't, if we weren't coaches. But because we are coaches, we make sure that we post. We post yeah. good content. It's niche specific. You know, we show up on stories. We create engagement, et cetera, et cetera. Whereas I, I'm the same as you. People who are like, I just don't like it. I get this one on a, you know, um, quite a lot as well, where it's like you'll ask a coach to go and follow. If, if somebody's followed you, follow them back. Oh, but I don't like cluttering up my feed. <laughs> Sound. Yeah. Are you, what are you on Instagram for? If uh, you want to have a uncluttered feed with re- content that you want to consume, have a personal page. Yeah. Like, have a personal page. Yeah. This is your business page. So you need to see it as this is my marketing. So if somebody who you think might be in your target market mm. follows you, follow them fucking back. Like, follow them back. I, yeah. can't, I can't get my head around it. It's almost like, oh, yeah, but I just don't want to follow too many people. Fucking come on. And, but you know, it comes back down to the whole ego and pride thing a little bit with that. And it's this whole like, I don't want to be seen as desperate or whatever. It's like, okay, cool, don't be. But you are desperate because you've got five clients. Yeah, so, yeah. I so love that. Again, it's, it, but it's one of those things where if you've got 70, 80 clients, you can take your foot off the gas. You can maybe not be as on the ball with your social media. You can maybe not post as frequently. But when you're starting out and when you're brand new, like it's your job. It should be a huge part of your day. Like it should be a huge part of your day. And 
the reason we're talking about this, the reason we, that Mike mentioned Arsenal at the start is that your stories should be the behind the scenes look of your life of what you do, right? So your grid posts on Instagram are going to be stuff that's a bit more valuable, a bit more entertaining, maybe a bit more curated, thought about, all that sort of stuff, right? But your stories is your chance to show people the behind the scenes of how you live your life, what you get up to, your opinions on certain topics and how you live your life. The example you set for people, whether you're a family person, you know, what you do in your spare time, because that's the stuff that gets someone aligned to you or not. Yeah. That is the stuff that people go, I like this person or I don't like this person, which is equally just as useful. And the reason that we brought up the Arsenal stuff is that anyone who's watched the all or nothing shows with Arsenal, they've done them before with Tottenham. I don't know if anyone's seen that one. There's a Man City one coming out, you said. I've, I've watched it before. It's out, it's out. It's out already. I've, yeah, I've, yeah. Well, I've watched it, that's why. I've watched I mean, Man City one, yeah. yeah. And I, again, I used to work in football. <laughs> I don't know. used to be an elite level football. <sighs> like, in, the, in the changing rooms at that point, you know. Mm. But um, I love watching them. And I always feel like at the end of watching them, I feel this sense of like attachment to the club, to the club that's been on. I don't like Tottenham or Man City or Arsenal like as a, from a, before watching that, from a personal point of view. But I tell you what, I watched the Arsenal game after watching that, that was live on Sky, and I was a bit more like, you, you feel like yeah. you want them to win. You yeah. know them. Because like, you, you saw, know the players. And you saw them Saka celebrate. And you feel like you know them. Yeah. And you feel like Saka was a great example. Like, I didn't know anything about the kid before. And now you realise how humble he is, how down to earth yeah, yeah. he is, how much he loves the fans and his people. And he's giving out presents to all the staff yeah, at Christmas. Yeah. You feel like now you're like, I can get on with this guy. I, can, he, I feel like I support him more. Yeah, yeah. That is what you should be doing on Instagram. It brings a human element to it, doesn't it? Like Because when you look at footballers on a pitch, yeah. you just see them as footballers. You don't necessarily know that they're just guys. They're, you they're just the lads. Values, you don't know the values. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think, you think as well they're all arrogant arseholes. Oh, yeah. You, you have assume. this preconceived yep. idea of making mm -hmm. a ton of money, whatever. Yep. But uh, you could probably actually, you know, make, make a correlation to online coaches where most people would probably assume that a PT is a bit arrogant, a bit full of themselves. Yeah. Bit, always bit in the ego. gym, always training hard. Yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a similar yeah. thing. So yeah. like Dan says, you need to get better at showing the behind the scenes of, of what you like, what you don't, what you do, what you don't do, what your values are, what they're not. Because it's those things that will sell. They they will be the things that sell you. Too many coaches focus, we've said this before, I don't think we've said it on, on YouTube to be fair, but but you, you think what's going to help you get clients is by posting value. Nobody gives a fucking toss about value. Nobody, nobody, nobody is going on Instagram unless you're an online coach to to go and learn something. Like, I tell you, do you look for more value. Is YouTube? YouTube, yeah. This is why we're doing the longer <laughs> format. Like, there's there's thought kind there's, kind, there's, kind of know what we're doing. Yeah, exactly. So like, people think that they need to be posting about protein swaps or right. three tips to increase your protein or why carbs aren't bad when in reality those are just lost in the noise because there's so many people doing it and most people that are going to be viewing your content that might be a, a potential lead or whatever will probably have seen that being posted by numerous other people because they're not yeah. following just you you're not the only coach that they will follow if they're in the market for a coach mm -hmm. they're probably going and following a few pages or whatever so what actually will help you resonate with that potential client lead, let's just say, um, is you. Like, that's the defining factor because anybody can, can find the knowledge from anywhere. Like, like, like you just said there, if you wanted to learn something, you'd probably type it in, in Google or YouTube. If you wanted to learn how to squat, you'd probably type it into YouTube. You'd probably watch a video on and, something. Unless you're an online coach, you just sit over and moan about it and don't do anything about it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. So, I don't know how to edit videos. Just yeah. never do it. Don't, don't do it then. Don't, don't Google it or YouTube it then. Um, yeah. Get on to do it. So that's, you know, sort of why is it? it. But, um, but yeah, so what you should actually be posting is, is opinions. Like on, on our call um, in the members group, 49 quid, so plug. Link below. Link below. Mm -hmm. um, the other day, I, um, I dragged up our, well, mine, um, Instagram from way back when we were kind of coaching more gen poppy type stuff and i just wanted i just wanted to show them what we were what we what types of stuff we were posting and none of it was was value none of it was about training or nutrition it was more opinions on training or nutrition style things yeah. in line with niches so it was very very niche down so there was o there's only going to be a certain type of demographic that would understand what i was saying in terms of like the jokes around it and things like that and it was from the opinions that you could derive the value because if i made a joke for example about starvation mode you got my opinion 
and the value comes out of me knowing that, oh, well, so he doesn't believe in starvation mode, but he's put it across in a different mm. way. And that's how you go about doing it. I could quite easily have said starvation mode doesn't exist. Like, and then wrote a ton of, a ton of words about starvation mode or sat blankly on a camera and just... a load of references from studies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exa- exactly. Yeah. Whereas you frame it in a different way and that's how we've done everything. We've never... I can't remember. Maybe we have at some point. I don't know. But like, I can't remember ever doing like... Va- real valuable stuff Maybe we might have done but it would have been so long ago we'd have gone quickly realised it doesn't really work because we I think that's the thing we don't give ourselves enough credit for is we kind of sometimes look at what's working well and what's not and we can kind of quickly go nah that's not working or this is working we need to stick with yeah. it or whatever but um, I think just on that like I, I when I watched the, again that the Arsenal show and the Tottenham Man City it's all the same they don't show you any clips of like a training session. They don't sit there and go, oh, so today, Mikel Arteta is going to do this drill and that drill and just show you the football. Mm. They don't show you that. Again, you could argue that would be valuable from a, from a coaching point of view. They, they show you very, very few bits of actual football. And you watch it. And I want you to, after this, go away and, and watch it. Like, seriously, go ahead and watch it and think to yourself, what can I take from this lesson, right? From watching the, the all or nothing. And it's all the stuff is behind the scenes. And a lot of it doesn't relate to necessarily football. It's more like opinions. It's more like how they're viewing certain people in a team or how they're viewing certain topics that come up, how they deal with certain events. And I think the biggest thing is for you to realize what out of that you can take and apply to your own thing. Because in it, there's not really much about football. I could argue you could even probably not have to be a huge, huge football fan to actually enjoy it and get yeah. something out of it. Absolutely. So that's how you should be using social media. Your social media should be you. It should be you. People know you're an online coach because of what it says in your bio. They know by your probably your profile photo and they know because there's a, a well, there should be some transformations going out on there. There should be some testimonials going out on there. They know that that's what you do. They're not too fussed about your knowledge, for example. Like, I could probably count on one hand the amount of time somebody's asked me for my qualifications. Like, one hand, probably. Mm-hmm. Uh, to which I responded, none. Um, I've got loads. <laughs> too many, if anything. Um, B-tech in, was it, plumbing? Um, yeah, plumbing. B-tech in plastering. Yeah, yeah plastering, was it? Was it? Second yeah. deficiency? Yeah. Um, so people are not that necessarily bothered about your knowledge. So stop trying to convince people that you have knowledge. Like your knowledge should come from the fact mm. that you get results and the fact that you're opinionated on certain things. Like people probably just expect that as a, as a bare minimum, which they should do. What's going to really connect with people is, is your stance and your values and your ethics and whether they actually like you. And if you think about the people that are bigger in this industry, they all do that. Like, it's all a personality. Like, yeah. just take James Smith, for example. If he posts a video about vegans, it's going to be a controversial, divisive, opinionated yeah. rant about vegans, which goes viral. He didn't go and talk about the pros and cons and made it into an infograph. Like, no. just, like, look at that. It's, and that's the thing is, so another thing, again, obviously, think about your YouTube channels that you watch and things that you watch, things you enjoy, right? So... One thing that, that me and Mike have both watched is, so Mike's not big into golf, right? I'm a bit more into golf, right? But those of you that used to watch Soccer AM, you know a guy called Tubes from Soccer AM. Um, so Tubes and his brother do a golf channel. Both of them, not particularly good at golf. Like, there's, 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 there's far better golfers out there, not Mike. They look Definitely. quite good to me. Yeah, they're good yeah. to you. They're not great golfers, right? But they get good guests on, they get some footballers on, they get funny guests on, right? You do not watch that for the golf. They go and play around a golf and they video it and stuff like that. But it's the fact that it's funny, it's entertaining, they ask good questions of the guests that are on, they play some shit golf around it and you can relate to it because they make the similar mistakes and all this sort of stuff. It would not work if you they focused more on the golf and got better at golf and were really, really good and didn't have the banter and the comedy yeah, and all yeah, that yeah. sort of stuff as part of it. It's a, it's a show. And I keep coming back to these examples because you'll be able to find examples in stuff that you like. So an, another example could be something like Bake Off, right? Again, I don't watch Bake Off. I haven't watched it for years, right? But I know that Paul Hollywood is a bit of a character. There's a whole thing about his handshake of when he's done a good job. And I think that people are losing this element of the Bake Off isn't just about the cake. It's about the show, right? It's about the show. Mm-hmm. And you need to create this on your own Instagram. It's, it's the show. It's the Dan Meek show, the Mike Harrison show, the Bison's Matter show, whatever it is. It's not just us sitting here giving you 
advice about how to build an online coaching business. It's not. It might seem that way, but there's all the little things around it. There's a reason that you then carry on watching because someone might say something funny, hopefully. Um, but it, it's that whole thing of it's our opinion on these topics. It's not a fact. It's our opinion on what we believe or how we've grown to how we've grown. And I think it's the same with any TV show you watch. The opinion is the reason you keep watching. Mm -hmm. They're the, they're the reasons you keep coming back to it or the reason you like certain people or certain comedians. Like we love Ricky Gervais. There's a reason we like him. Mm. Other people are funny, but not our type of funny, mm. not the way that we like it. And I think that you need to look at it that way and go, if you're an online coach, every single online coach can hopefully, I say that, no, it's a lie. They can't coach. No. <laughs> but, but they can all say the same sort of things, right? It's just whether it's your taste or not. And you're trying to find people who you are their taste. That's what you're, that's who you're trying to find. Um, and you have to give them a reason or the opportunity to find that by putting yourself out there and putting things out there that aren't related to training and nutrition mm -hmm. is your life. Absolutely. And that is the one thing I think you can take from those sorts of shows and watching other people you enjoy. Are you giving enough of the behind the scenes of your life, of what you get up to in your free time, your own training, your own stuff on your Instagram stories? Are you doing enough of that? I think that's one of the key things for a lot of people is they, I, I see coaches put up like three stories a day. Yeah. And I'm like, how are you expecting anyone to yeah. connect with you when all you're doing is posting your morning coffee and then going to bed? I'm like, okay, well. Or like a reshare, like a, a reshare of something. And that's the other thing. There you go, that's, another, that's another great point. The amount of people Thank that you. just reshare stories without any sort of context without any sort of like comment about why that person's reshared that or what it's about. Mm -hmm. They just press reshare straight away, add the yeah. story, add the story, add the story without any sort of concept of, well, why is that important? Who's this person? What program are they on? What results have they got? When did they start? Yeah. Are they finishing? And what have what they had to overcome? And, and I think, yeah, I just think people are far too quick to just make rash decisions with this stuff. But then they also say they don't like social media. And I think the reason for that is because they don't see anything back because what they're putting out is shit. Yeah, yeah. Like, you, you made a point a second ago about, think about what you like to watch. And you probably like to see behind the scenes of people. Like, 100% you do. Like, this, this is why views go up when you're on holiday. Because people are nosy. Because mm -hmm. people want to go and see those things. Because, shock horror, you end up posting more personal stuff when you're on holiday. You're showing what you're eating, where you are, the beach, whatever. You get more views because you, because you're showing yep. more behind the scenes. So so do do more of it. Yep. Like when you're in your, you know when you're at home, do more of it because people are nosy. People want to see what you're doing. People want to see inside your house as daft as it sounds. Like people want to feel like they know you. Like they know what Dan has for breakfast every morning. They know that he's got fucking dogs. Like people know stuff. So you feel like again with the Arsenal thing, you feel like you know them. And 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 if you feel like you know somebody then you're more likely to be a supporter of them. Whereas if you are just a, a generic coach who puts generic information out and never shows who you are, what you do behind the scenes, and you put out a couple of reels of you talking blankly to a camera, poorly edited in poor lighting, just talking about fucking protein, don't expect to get any clients. Hmm. Like, don't expect to get any. I think with that as well, the last point I want to make is if a club like Arsenal and Tottenham and Man City, right? Just think about how big and huge they are, right? They must see value in letting cameras into their club to do that show. Yeah. They wouldn't do that just to be like, oh, this should be something nice for the fans. They're smart. They're doing it from a marketing point of view, from a, from a sponsorship point of view. They're doing it for a reason. They would not let those videos go out if it showed them in a bad light or it showed them in any way to be, to be poor. Do you know who I want to see? Do you want to see? Man United. Yeah, everyone, yeah, everyone wants to see Man United now. But again, Damn do you think right. they're going to let them in? Absolutely nope. not. Of course they're not. Because they're in turmoil, right? And, I, and this, is, this is the thing. Is that I think it's really important that sometimes you look at these overall messages and think, yeah, there's a reason they're doing that. Mm. There's a reason that I want to watch it. They'll probably be asking us soon. So Well, they've, had, they've already asked. I've got to tell you, mate. They've already asked. All or nothing. Yeah. You know? Well, they took the nothing, yeah. nothing option yeah. in the end. So. They, they did, yeah. They took yeah. The in hindsight, we should have said all or £100. <laughs> yeah. And then at least we'd have got £100. We got £100, haven't we? Yeah. So. yeah. Um, um, but that, there's, a, there's a huge lesson there, I think, for, for a lot of people. And look, and I think recently, again, I am hold my hands up. Recently, I've not been as good at showing that side of stuff because I think for us, we've been really busy, potentially burnt out, whatever you want to call it. Um, but it's something that we will get better at. It's nervous something breakdown, that you, you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, nervous breakdown, yeah, all that stuff. It's fine. Yeah, it's know. all good. It's really good fun being busy. Yeah. Um, but 
it's also worth remembering that it doesn't have, you don't have to do it all the time. There's, there's going to be waves with it. You're going to have momentum. You're going to have some weeks where you're better or worse. But again, if you've got between five and 20 clients, you can do that every day. I don't care what you say. You're not that yeah. busy. You're not that busy. And if you are in the position where you've got 60, 70 clients, you can afford to not be as busy on there and not on it as much, right? Because you're actually working. But it's those people that sort of say, oh, I need more clients or I haven't got enough clients. So I'm like, okay, cool. Well, you've got no excuse then because you just told me you've got time. Yeah. Um, so start thinking about it like that and just start putting some effort into the marketing side of it. And again, ask yourself that question. Why are Arsenal, Tottenham, Man City, big, uh, but they do it in America as well. Big American football teams do it. Why do they let them in? Why do they do it? There's a reason they do it because it puts them in a much better light. It makes them seem more human, more real. Um, even down to the point where the Arsenal one, like they had the director in. So the, the, all the fans hate the Arsenal board. Crunky. Yeah, they hate the directors. They hate the owners. They're already three episodes in I've watched. They're coming off better. Because they just, they're just human beings and they, yeah. all of a sudden they go, well, this is what we're trying to achieve. And I know maybe we haven't put it across great, but this is actually what we're trying to do. Yeah. And I bet you more fans like them now than dislike them before. Yeah, yeah. I, like I keep coming back to it, but just watch it and, and you'll, you, be grip, you get gripped by it. The other one is, is the whole Love Island thing, right? I f can't stand it, right? I, I would never watch it. But I imagine the reason you watch it is because you get a behind the scenes look into people's lives. They're dating or whatever goes on, right? And you get the, you almost see the, the, the backstabbing yeah, bit. it's gossip, you know, you, it's yeah, drama. You see the behind the scenes bit that other people can't see. And you get like, your oh. favourite. It's the same, it's how Big Brother works, all sorts of stuff. Yeah, because people have their favourites because they get to know them as people. Yeah. Whereas if they just plastered their faces on it as pictures and went, oh, this person's going to date this person and you wouldn't have any sort of personal opinion on it. Yeah. And I think that you need to start thinking about your Instagram in that way. Are you giving people an opportunity to get to know you, to like you? Because from what I see of a lot of line coaches, they do not or whatsoever. And I, and I said this to a client on their check-in the other day. I said to them, I said, I don't know who you are. I said, not in, not in like a, no, I don't know your name, but I said, I don't know you. I said, I don't know if you've got a partner. I don't know if you've got kids. I don't know if you've got a dog. I don't know if you've got another job. I said, I don't know anything about you. Mm. It's just, all I know about you is protein and calories and mindful eating or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. I, was like, I was like, whereas I bet you know me. And they're like, yeah, I know this, I know that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it might be, it might seem like it's really boring that like I post about golf all the time, but you know I like and play golf. Yeah. You know that I like eggs. You know that I like coffee, whatever, right? We joke about this all the time, but I get more questions about those sorts of things than I do about mm -hmm. coaching. And by the way, right. that's how it should be. Like, that's how it should be. If you're expecting to sit there and have 100 conversations about fitness all day, you're sorely mistaken. All the, all, like I posted about the football. I posted that I was work, that I worked in football and the amount of messages, I go, oh my God, what did you do? Who did you work for? Boot uh, cleaner. Yeah, I'll, yeah. yeah I, had to, I had to do a little story then. I was like, okay, this is what I did. This is, and funny enough, I had a few of the footballers I used to work with reach out and be like, yeah, yeah. Did you? It's all good, yeah. Who reached out? Name drops them. Joe Dudgeon. What? Wait, no, who? I know he is. Yeah, so you don't know who he is. Who? Aaron McLean. No. Sorry? Aaron McLean, yeah. Pro mm. footballers. Don't, Anyone else? Don't worry about it. Just dropping those names on there. Don't worry about well, that. I was going to say clang, but there's not much of a drop, is it? They <laughs> yeah, float down pin, like pin that. Drop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I think I, I just think that a lot of coaches can learn from from that side of stuff. Um, and there you go. We turn it into a bit of content for you. Yeah, that's quite long. I think that one. Sorry. We'll wrap that up. Go and join our members group because you get this and more. Done. Loads more. <laughs>